CSR team argued that social and environmental initiatives can be adopted without compromising profitability. For this to be true, either the initiatives don't cost any money or the money spent on the initiatives is recovered in an increase in profits. No or low cost support of initiatives are likely to be perceived by the stakeholders as a performative statement of support that shouldn't be taken seriously. If money is spent on the initiative, it will take some time to recover the cost spent and there will be a decrease in profit in the meantime. There's also a risk that the money is never recovered and they will experience a decrease in their profits. If a company chooses an initiative that is viewed as controversial by one or more of its stakeholders, are they going to risk losing some of their profit when the customers stop buying their product or investors and stop investing in their company? Or if in the controversy they back away or drop the initiative, are they going to be seen as being wishy-washy? Both options have a cost associated with them. One impacts the bottom line and the other impacts the company's reputation. The main argument for the traditional corporate social responsibility was that the social and environmental impact could easily be adopted throughout organizations and it was essential to do so. Again, Friedman is not opposed to social change and social responsibility as long as it aligns with the organization's foundation and those decisions are made by the shareholders. The other main argument within the traditional CSR was that customers are way more willing to follow an organization and stay loyal to them and even pay more for a product or a service in the end if they know that organization is practicing social responsibility, which is great. That is a impact that it has on the public of having these practices and Friedman is well aware of the benefits that it can gain. Friedman's issue is that a lot of these organizations are using that social responsibility as the cloak, he calls it. They're hiding behind these terms to gain that customer loyalty from any level. But it's truly about if the organization has good motives behind these social responsible actions. Um, is it just a superficial change, again, to gain that public customer loyalty? Are there actually addressing deep-rooted systemic problems? Or are they just lightly brushing over that to gain that loyalty and respect from the public? I think it's important that Friedman really highlighted that it's critical to question the intentions and impacts of the social responsibility, the social responsible actions that organizations are taking. It's important for public for the public to question them. Another important action again that Friedman mentions when describing the cloak are the motives behind these, uh, these socially responsible actions. There are profit-driven motives underlying in a lot of these actions and the companies a lot of the time claim that they are not gaining anything from these actions but that is naive of them to claim that they are not benefiting from these actions. It's important if you're gonna take any CSR action to be transparent about what the company is gonna be gaining in return, to just be naive or act naive 
to the um, impact it will have on the public, but then in turn on the company in a positive way, it is not, it's almost not ethical. And that's what Friedman argued is that it's borderline unethical to not be transparent with these motives. The traditional CSR claims that a company can act solely in a responsible way without compromising the profits of the organization or in turn that that isn't their main goal. But how can that be true? You are sacrificing something in the end. Friedman argues, okay, if you were gonna go down the corporate social responsibility path, that is awesome as long as it does align with the true foundation of the organization and with what the shareholders want. And if that is their choice, then they can make that. But be transparent and honest because there will be a compromise in one way or the another of profitability and where that is coming from. Just don't hide behind the cloak of social responsibility. Be transparent and be honest. Take accountability for the actions and what might be going on behind the scenes of these decisions. To address the argument made for conscious capitalism, it was said that the purpose of an organization is to create value for all stakeholders. And the value that a company creates for employees, customers, and suppliers is all centered around profit. Employees want to make money, customers want lower priced goods, and suppliers want to be paid more for materials. So how can it be said that there's a higher purpose beyond profit maximization when the definition of value in an organizational context is how much money is generated? Second, the argument never addressed the ways to quantify the results of ethical and sustainable business practices. Using words like ideals and a higher purpose is meaningless without results that show how these things actually impact stakeholders and what kind of difference they're making in a company. When addressing conscious capitalism, something that was first stated is that capital, conscious capitalism is based on the profit and benefit financially, which in all consideration is aligned to what Fred, Fredman's argument was or standpoint is, is that what is the majority and priority of a lot of financial and economic benefit is the stockholders. So I think in all actuality, what is being circled around of conscious capitalism is in alignment to Fred's argument. One of the main arguments that was made in conscious capitalism is that is aligned to a higher purpose. Now this is subjective because higher purpose is defined by the person who is defining what higher purpose means. Therefore, it could also align that the higher purpose of a business is for the economical and stockholding growth financially, which can then be in return also aligned to Fredman's argument. Um, so I think that that doesn't create substance and is contradicting to what they're actually trying to sustain because a higher purpose is very subjective, is not objective to a company. The purpose and the mission and the value is also subjective to the person, including the business itself. Um, lastly, one of the arguments that was made at the end when it becomes to conscious capitalism is that there is a lot of sustainability in the financial market when it comes to capital conscious capitalism um, and there were some statistics given on how that aligns to um, some of the proof on how that actually comes into fruition which in reality is also in support to what Friedman was talking about how when we focus on the business itself that there is economical growth I think it becomes how we perceive and receive the message of what he's stating. But I think even with conscious capitalism, we see a lot of alignment on how um, financial and economical growth and the pri prioritization of business itself is a huge weight on what can then become fruitful in other aspects. 
But I think what I'm hearing and what cannot be denied, whether it's ca conscious capitalism or Friedman's argument, is the fact that um, there is a lot of weight on the financial aspect of the business. And because there's a lot of weight on that, that allows other fruitfulness to happen. So that's where a lot of the rebuttal in the conscious capitalism argument or standpoint comes in that a lot of it seems to be more subjective and also focused in realigning itself to the financial values which at the basis is what Friedman was vocalizing and stating.